afternoon, everyone. All right, let's get some energy here. For those of you who might not know me, I'm Dr. Donna Marasco, and I'm Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. And I want to welcome you for the second annual College of Arts and Sciences Graph Debate. Now, before we start the debate, I'm hoping that all the students who are here have signed up for the raffle. We will have 10 awards at the end. They're gift cards. And the last is a hundred dollars. So if you didn't sign up, only once, okay, sign up. But you have to be here at the end of the debate to win the award, okay, to win the prize. Now, the premise of this is that we have 10 professors stranded on a desert island with only one of them being able to escape because we have a single person raft, each of the islanders must, each of the islanders must argue why they, and only they, should be the ones to be in the raft because their discipline is most important and therefore most deserving of survival. So the way this is going to happen, I will be pulling out a name my basket so that there's no bias in who goes first and that faculty member will have three minutes to give their case on why their discipline is most important. After we go through all ten faculty we will then again hear from each faculty with a rebuttal so that they could counter the arguments made by the other disciplines. And then, by your applause, vote, yelling, enthusiasm, we will pick the winner of this debate. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to start? Are we ready to start? Patterns. 
And uh, for this reason, I think that mathematics deserves the spot on a life raft because we are uh, the most general seeker of patterns of which each other discipline is limiting themselves, their scope. So that's all I have to say. <laughs>
is not the zombies, right? Who's the real danger? Us. Other human beings. You also know if you watch The Walking Dead that science is not going to save you and that your only salvation is going to come with your ability to create a community of people, to organize that community, and to determine how decisions about power in that community are going to be made. Politics, right? Come the zombie apocalypse, and it's coming. Politics is going to be your only salvation. Now, I don't want to be too serious about this, but the reality is that uh, the decisions about our lives, two minutes, all right. The decisions about our lives are very serious ones. It's not the case that people are starving to death on this earth because there's not enough food and we need to genetically modify some new food to feed everyone on this earth. It's not the case that the earth is dying because it can't sustain this amount of human life, and it's simply the fact that we haven't been able to collectively get together and make the decisions necessary to do that, which raises interesting questions. If I understand the premise of the raft debate, it's that there's a mainland over there full of people. Let's call them ordinary people. <laughs> and then there's an island full of experts. This makes me wonder if the problem is not really that we need some experts on the mainland, or if maybe it's a blessing actually that the experts are all trapped on this island and they can't get over there. Do we really need, do we really need chemists on the mainland to design pharmaceuticals that we don't need? Do we need communications majors to market them to us and convince them that we do need them? Do we need psychologists to help corrupt politicians get elected so that nothing ever changes? <laughs> or should it really be the case that we let the ordinary people run their own lives? I don't know if that's a vote for me to stay on the island or leave the island, <laughs> but just remember this, vote for me or the zombies win. Thank you. Measure the highest point of the sun, 
and then you measure the angle, and then if it goes up or down, I know I'm going up and down in latitude. Pop navigation quiz. How do you measure longitude if you don't know your stars? If somebody can answer this, I'm happy to give a spot on my Hi. right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. here today. Oh no, I've brought Al the alligator and together we're going to show you why biology is the only discipline which you can truly save today. Fortunately if we fail, Al is also a raft so hopefully I can save myself but please <laughs> let me bring my discipline with me. So clearly this debate is a matter of all life and death and who better to talk about life than the biologist. So for one thing, for one thing, we all know that we're not truly alive until we've had our morning coffee. Hence the coffee that's on the floor. So who's had their coffee this morning? Excellent. Glad to see you. So we all know that coffee hopefully comes from plants. And plants are alive. And that is biology as well. So we can take the beans, we might make nice tasty treats, and then we benefit from them. Now, if we didn't have biology, we wouldn't have things like coffee. We wouldn't have chocolate, we wouldn't have cheese, and in a few years when you're old enough, you wouldn't have beer either. So fortunately, <laughs> fortunately biology is here. So I do have some chocolate, so we can have some chocolate. <laughs>
All right, we'll get started. So, there's a lot I could say, but I have three minutes, we'll keep it tight, right? Um, now, you probably think, if you know anything about me, that I'm going to hit you with a barrage of rapid fire facts, and I'm going to come at you with all this knowledge, but I'm just going to bring a little bit. I just want to do a little bit right now. Okay, so first, let's start with the, the uh, department title, right? The Department of Biodiversity, Earth, and Environmental Science. That's like a third of my time to say, right? It's pretty long. Now, the thing is, why is it so long? We have to abbreviate it for a reason. Because we do a lot, right? We do an awful lot. In fact, when you come right down to it, I would say you could kind of say that that whole name fits into the title of ecology. I mean, I could look at that, right? And when you say, what is an ecologist? Well, ecology comes from the Greek for ecos, or the whole household. And in fact, that's what we're talking about. That's right. We study the whole earth at one time. How much more relevant can you get to human survival than that, right? So I think that's kind of what we do. We do things like we look at biotechnology chemical cycles. How do things move? The air, the water, the land, things like phosphorus, <laughs> nitrogen, carbon, these are kind of a big deal, right? This, this is a very important thing. But personally, for me, I like to take it back to what's very near and dear to me, biodiversity, and especially insects. And I know people don't like insects, so if you had your way, you'd probably get rid of it, right? But we really, literally cannot live without them, right? So this is an important thing. When you look at it, plants, about 90% of plants are pollinated by insects. That's incredible. And in fact, a recent study in the journal of Science found in 41 different global agro-ecosystems in every single case, they had better fruit yield, better fruit production when you had native pollinators in high diversity in these areas. So I just think it's very important to think about that because, you know, there's the money. We talk about $40 billion a year in the United States is what pollinator services are worth. But, you know, you can, you can eat. It's kind of a big deal, I think. Anyway, so I, just, I prepared a little quiz for you. I should see how, uh, how you guys do with this real quick. So, ah, figure that would happen. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this to work here. And then we, all right, um, let's bring it up. There we go. Okay, so I have a quiz for you. Now, which of the following can you actually eat, right? Because you're going to live, you got to eat. So I've got, sorry, I'm going to be here. Okay, I've got books for like history and political science and all kinds of things. Right? Okay, fine. We've got a calculator. Not too tasty, right? Um, we've got a, uh, I think that's an Aztec calendar or something. Sorry, that's, that's you as well. Um, we've got a vaccine. Can you eat a vaccine? Well, you can save people. I get biology support, but here's the thing about chemistry and biology. We take chemistry and make it useful to life. And we take biology and keep it so you can actually keep it going, right? Sustainable. So, yes, vaccines are important, obviously, right? But you don't have people even eat. You can't really get vaccines, right? So we're thinking, oh, it's looking real good around here, right? It's pretty looking pretty good. All things pollinated by insects, and then over here, you can thank bats for tequila. God, they mostly get pollinated by bats, right? Important. So we've got our, um, over here, a Perlmutter class. I don't know, Adams, sure. Yeah, we eat them, but not in the form that they look like that, right? So, and then we have brains, and, uh, you know, I already got a zombie reference made, so they kind of stole my thunder. But I was going to say, humans know zombies? Yes. For sure, right? So if you're interested in saving humanity, I think you really want to have the people that can keep you alive. For real, that's what we do, that's our job. Okay, so that's all I have to say. I've developed a model in a short period of time. That's what anthropology does. We 
develop a model, we do ethnography, we examine the actual behavior and compare it to the ideal. The three things you, I want you to keep in mind before I do this is one, I don't have a critical bone in my body. Uh, two, I'm completely objective, I'm above subjectivity, and I'm completely sincere uh, in everything I say and do. And the anthropology majors know that for a fact. Um, I can, my model projects and predicts that this is going to turn into a Lord of the Flies uh, scenario. Um, I believe that the real scientists, that would be the physicists, the chemists, the biologists, the mathematicians, will constantly belittle the non-scientists because their work is not scientific. Um, and they will have this perceived superiority and they'll form a club. Um, of course, they don't have any practical skills, so they will slowly die of starvation. <laughs> But this will cause a severe identity crisis on the part of the psychologists and the environmental scientists because they truly want to be scientists, but the real scientists will not let them join the club. <laughs> they will become depressed and wallow in self-pity. The political scientists will object and say, look, look, I'm a scientist. It's in my discipline, my name, political science. I'm a scientist. But no one will care. <laughs> He'll demand a vote because that's what they do, but no one will care, and no one will vote. And he'll just drift away by himself, counting non-votes. The novelist, the novelist will go away by himself in a huff, mumbling, no one on this island appreciates art and literature. There's not a world I want to live in. He'll threaten suicide, but of course that's nothing more than a plot device, and therefore nothing happens. <laughs> The criminologist, my good friend, will be confused and frustrated because there's no crime. He will then try to get the non-scientists to rise up as one and have overtake and overwhelm the scientists. But we're academics. We don't ever take action. We only talk. <laughs> and then we talk some more and nothing happens. So my good friend Rob will wander aimlessly in circles until he also dies of starvation. Um, so that's why you need an ethnographer. I will record this. I will record everything of the sordid events that will obviously happen. I will then go write ethnography. I will then take it to the outside world, tell them that we cannot repeat this utter stupidity of putting people on an island like this, and keep this from happening year after year after year. We must do it <laughs>
makes medicines, that's chemistry. To give us um, cures so we don't uh, suffer any diseases in the future, again, more medicines, more pharmaceuticals, that's chemistry. For chemistry, we need to be able to, as we combine these different chemicals, we need to know which chemicals to combine. We don't want to combine them and make things that are toxic. We don't want to make things that are dangerous. Only the chemist is going to know which chemicals to combine. Again, that's chemistry. We need to be able to analyze the chemicals to figure out which ones are going to be toxic, which ones are going to be safe. Again, that's chemistry. On the trip to the mainland, so there are going to be certain things we need to do. We need to preserve food to last the trip. Again, that's chemistry. We're going to need to purify the seawater to make it drinkable. That's chemistry. When we're talking about food, everyone knows that chemists are great cooks. <laughs> because cooking is just following a lab procedure. That's chemistry. <laughs> Finally, if we're going to repopulate the world, you're going to need to find a mate. And what's the term that we use to describe people who are compatible? That's chemistry. <laughs> Thank you. 
are important. There's no doubt about it that every discipline here makes our world a better place, okay? But here's the thing. As I mentioned earlier, the criminology person who does justice research, all kinds of good scholarship in those fields, that person understands how to help a society build from the bottom up, create stable social institutions that help people operate safely and in good health, which ultimately then creates a level playing field for everybody in society and then allows people to care about things like chemistry and physics and biology. Because if you're not safe, if you don't have good, healthy environments, 
we don't have enough to, uh, of that resource to bring out the best in our people and to tap into these resources. Plus, finally, we've heard a lot about zombies and we've heard a lot about Lord of the Flies. That's because no strong centralized government. Criminologists <laughs> understand the importance of a strong centralized government because that reduces violence. So there. something about uh, designing a housing development with uh, ease of surveillance. You're making me nervous, man. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, what else? The physicist, you mentioned uh, navigating by measuring angles. Well, that sounds like you're doing math to me. Um, <laughs> biology, you have a compelling argument. Coffee, cheese, beer. Uh, we, we love these things. But I think they all existed well before the field of biology. Um, bees, you said uh, you do a lot, and I think that's true. Uh, your department does a lot, but math is a prerequisite for almost everybody. Uh, so I think if you do any sort of quantification, abstraction, generalization, then uh, fundamentally you're going to be doing some math. Okay, so maybe the stuff did exist, but biology is needed to optimize it to get us to a level where we can all enjoy our morning coffee. Otherwise, you might be fighting over your coffee and then it could turn into Lord of the Flies there as well. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why we're talking about zombies because at the end of the day, it's all about life. And as I said, biology is the study of life. So really, you need to save biology. People keep talking about housing development. Like, do we really need houses? Surely the key things is making food, enough food, having different resources, but living in a house, we, before, we didn't always live in houses. So surely it's about the central features of having enough food to support people, being able to be happy through having chocolate and coffee, being able to have these choices that we can have them. And a lot of people have been saying, you know, that they don't like biology or biology, just, they're, they're, they're looking down on us. But that's only because they're scared, because really biology is interdisciplinary and you may be able to take physicists and change them, but biology, you, biochemists, we, we interact with every discipline. So save us and really you could be saving everybody. Please. <laughs> Likely to survive. We're going to be able to purify water to survive the trip. And clearly, I'm 
that's funny. I know a lot about the history of society, and I've never heard of one that's been built from the molecule level. Oh, this is very confusing. And I'll be the last person to agree with my esteemed mathematician colleague about much. I certainly don't want him building my house. Um, but I agree that there's been this strange confusion between objects of study and academic disciplines. Thankfully, thankfully, human society has existed long before the biologists came along to categorize it and classify it. Thankfully, coffee and chocolate existed long before the biologists determined that that was a thing. Uh, thankfully, people have been around and organizing themselves. People have been having sex since long before the biologist and the chemist and the psychologist sucked all the fun out of it. <laughs> and so the reality is people have been doing these things, people can, can you do, do, continue to do these things, and a vote for politics, I mean, you don't, you vote for Hillary and Jeb if you want, don't vote, I don't care, but vote for yourselves, because you're the only ones that are going to be able to do this in the future. Vote for politics, vote for yourselves. Thank you.
before I announce the winners of the raffle, I just want us all to give a great round of applause for everyone here. They've been wonderful. And I want to give a great round of applause for all of you out there because the energy in this room today is who the College of Arts and Sciences is. We rock. <laughs> Amanda Torres from Environmental Science. Go to a Diane and Chill give you your award. Uh, the, the first are how much? Uh, $25. They're $25 gift certificates, the first ones. Okay, so Amanda Torres, are you here? Francesca Torno, Psychology. Cindy Lynn, Physics. <laughs> Celine Kat Kaur, Anthropology. <laughs> Trang Do, Psychology. Megan Madrigal, History. Um, Adush Fish, Fish Wanathan, Biomed Engineering. Priyanka Nair, Psychology. Is this the big one? And the, this is the big prize? One more before the big prize. Okay. Liz Wills, Physics. And now the last prize for a hundred dollars, Christopher Bonag, Sociology. Thank you so much for coming and see you next year.